So one of the things I mentioned in the last video was uh, that we'd had a service done recently and we'd had Darren Round, our regular service engineer, lives local, mobile, but only works the area. A number of people have asked uh, for his details um, and he will really only work uh, within a, you know, a specific radius of where he operates, where he lives. Anyway, going back to our service, pretty much a clean bill of health. I mentioned in the last video that we've got a couple of advisories, so I'll, I'll tell you about those in a second. But very thorough is Darren, does a great job, and um, he does a, a full gas report. So in terms of the oven, the grill, the hot plate, the fridge, and the LD combi water, boiler, etc., all pass with flying colour, so we've got a certificate to say that our gas is good. He does a, a damp report, you know, probably one of the most crucial bits of any caravan service is, you know, we always want to be avoiding damp. And again, this is all passed with flying colours, but there was just one area that is highlighted that I should have a little look at, and it was at the front uh, near side of the caravan. And I'll show you, because I'm going to go over and do a repair job today, so I'll show you where that is. But the, the readings are all well below sort of 15, you know, average readings are sort of 12, 13, um, and anything kind of less than 20 is saying is nothing to worry about, but just this one area was reading 17, where everything else was like 11, 12, 13. And when he had a little look, it was on the exterior of the van, there's a little bracket, which I'll show you, which has got a crack in it. Um, and he just suspects that potentially there could be a bit of water getting in there for whatever reason. Um, not water, moisture. So it's nothing to worry about, but worth looking at. So I'm gonna sort that out today. The only other area, and this is his overall sort of uh, summary sheet, if you like, check sheet um, was a recommendation with the carbon monoxide alarm apparently never knew this and he did point this out to me last time and I forgot but your carbon monoxide alarm should have a, a sort of a date on it an end by date the, the generally sealed units got a battery for life as such um, but there will be a point where it will need to be replaced there was no date on ours and it's been in there since we got the caravan. Um, so that's the best part of uh, six years. So he advised that I change that and make sure that I had one that's got a date on. So I've got a new one of those to fit. That'll be a two minute job. Right, pretty straightforward job, I think, really. This is the, where I'm, the area that I'm talking about. And this little bracket here, probably you call it, but um, it's part of the trim. It's got a crack in it. Can you see the crack at the top? Um, this is where the 17% reading is. Nothing to worry about at 17%, but just stands out because it's higher than the others. Now, the other interesting thing about this is when you come around the side, hopefully we'll pick it up with the camera. You come around the side, we've got a nice seal that runs all the way down. It's gonna be hard to pick it up in here. A nice seal, very tight seal, until we get right down to the bottom and there's a gap here in that seal. So what I'm going to do is take this bracket off, I'm going to try and pull out some of that old sealant to about here and then give it a bit of a clean with a bit of white spirit or something and then just reseal that and put the new bracket on. I think when this bracket comes off the screws will almost certainly have um, a whole load of sick of slick effect, sick of, I can never say it, sealant. <laughs> here it is, look. Sickerflex, here we go. So we're going to use some Sikaflex, which is absolutely the stuff of the job in terms of you know anything like caravans, motorhomes, boats. That's what we need to be just resealing this area here with. So that's going to come off. Get a load of Sikaflex around the holes where the screws are. Reseal this and then get that back on nice and tight. There's also a little crack in this side here as well. Not a big job, but I hate getting my hands dirty and something tells me I'll get this stuff all over my fingers. Here we go. Just whip these little um, dust covers off. That's one. That's two. <laughs> oh, I don't like the way that's coming off. I need a new screw on there. Oh, 
one's okay, but this one's seen better days, it's typical. So what you would almost certainly hope would be a simple little job, already that screw head is worn. This one should come out. Yeah, it's just held on by a bit of sicker flex, I think. Yeah, it's turning with the manual one, but it's not coming out. That's weird. Just turning around. I think it's just stuck in now. Yeah. That's it. Right, now we can see what we're dealing with. Have a look in here. Pretty black. So the first thing is get all the old rubbish out of there, give that a clean up, and then seal those gaps up. Yeah, there's no sealant there, like. Get that out. I've just removed this bottom bit here as well. The sticker flex is really good, very strong, very sticky, but there's quite a bit of moisture at the bottom here, like water. I think this is from where I cleaned the caravan. So I always have the caravan sloping slightly forward. The water's running down here clearly, as it would do, because that's what happens, it comes off the roof. There was a gap here, but here, I don't know if you can make that out, but that's actually wet here, and we haven't had any rain for two or three days. So I think, it's built up the bottom of here. So I'm just gonna clean this bit up. I think we're about as clean as we can get this now. This whole area under here was bunged right up with the sicker flex, so we're gonna have to give that a plenty. I mean, Really, we'll, we'll fill this right up, all this area here with Sycaflex, because it'll be out of sight. The new guards will be on here, covering that up. Just got to seal a little bit down this side, where the gap is. And the job should be a good one. Let's see how we get on. First things first, I want to really bung it up in here. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Try and really squash it in there. And all down here, as thick as you like. Because all of this bit is out of sight. Bung it up. Now whether I can pack it in or not, I'm not sure. I'm going to try and pack a bit in here. You can probably tell I'm not a DIY man. That's packed in pretty much like it was, which was solid. Now we've got to get a bit neater, because I'm going to go up the sides now. And what I'll do, just get a bit of kitchen towel and just smooth that off. Yeah, that's better. I just want to put a bit down this side as well, because I took a little bit out of this. Yeah, that's the way I do it. It's with your finger, really. 
Right, so next thing is get these guards on. I, put, I bought some new screws. Well, I didn't buy them, I already had them. To go in these holes. And uh, did notice as well that this is pretty well bunged up here. So I'm going to just put a little bit in here where the screws are going to go through. And the same on this bottom guard. Could do with a bit of a wipe. A little bit and we've got to put this on first. That's it. Which is why I've got white spirit. Okay, that goes on there anyway. I can go a bit tighter yet. <coughs> right, now that's on, I'm gonna bung a load more in. I don't think I can have too much in here before we put the next bit on. Bung that up now. Put this on. That goes on there. That one goes in there. So this new guard I got from eBay, I think I paid five or seven quid maybe. It wasn't a lot of money anyway, it was worth it. That was including delivery. You just um, look up the part number that you need by just searching for your van. And it will come up pretty quick and easy. Now these screws are just a fraction longer and very slightly thicker, but they are uh, soft tappers. And they're going in and they're nice and tight. I'm not using the old screws because they're well, they caked in sicker flakes from the last job to be fair. But there, that's it, doing the job. As is that, I, mean, I suppose you need to be tight, the sicker flakes going to take a grip on it anyway. I'm going to put a final little bit in there, right on the edge. There. And round here and down there. Not that you really need that there because I don't think it's doing too much. I think I might bung that up as well. I don't see why I should it. I don't suppose this is never the neatest job you've ever seen, but it's the first time I've ever done this. And my priority number one is eradicate damp. I don't want it looking a mess, but not too bad. I've never done this before. There's one. New sealer down here, full of sicker flakes inside, a new plastic um, bracket on there. This has been taken off, cleaned up, re flexed, and a new sicker flex up this side as well.
So hopefully that will do the job. So before we take a quick look at the carbon monoxide fitting, it takes just two seconds. A reminder that actually this coming Sunday, we've got another video out. Helen's going to do a product review. And remember, we only do product reviews on products that we either really like or we think that you'll be very interested in. And this one ticks both boxes. And there's a massive, massive discount available on the product as well. So tune in on Sunday at half past four for that. So let's go back to the servicing and have a quick look at why we're fitting a new carbon monoxide alarm into the caravan. On Darren's report, this Fire Angel carbon monoxide alarm uh, is working perfectly well, as you can see. However, and Darren is quite right with his observations here, when you look all over the back of this, nowhere to be seen is there an end by date. So it's sort of a sealed for life, in a battery for life job. But it, despite that, what Darren was telling me is that these units still need to be replaced by a given date and the date should be on this model. It does say replace seven years after installation so it's about time but how do you know when the installation was? So yeah we inherited that and to be on the safe side despite the fact it's working that's going to go. Let me show you what we're going to replace it with. Right so here's what we're replacing it with uh, another fire angel carbon monoxide alarm and if you look on the back of this one and it is a bit it's a bit small but I think yeah on the top here I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this because it's so small right on the end there it says 09 2034 right on the end can you I don't know if you can make it out 09 2034 so that's good for actually more than 10 years 11 years in fact now I'm aware that you can buy these units where it's a dual smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm I did contemplate that there's only really one reason why I didn't and that is because I've got two screws up here where the old one went and I've got an alarm there which is perfectly serviceable And works well. The thought crossed my mind that if there was a malfunction on a dual, would both the fire alarm and the carbon monoxide alarm pack in at the same time? I don't know. These things are tested, aren't they? I'm sure they're all good. But no, <clears throat> primarily because there's two screws up there, I'm going to replace that with this. Now you can bet your bottom dollar that those brackets, those little brackets there for those screws, although it's the same make, I bet you they're a different width apart which will mean I've got to put another hole in it. Let's find out. Right, let's do a little check on these holes first of all. Something tells me I'm not... No. Isn't that typical? That is so annoying. There's not a lot in it there. But enough. Bit of a change of heart. I don't fancy making more holes in the caravan. The less holes in your caravan you can have, the better. So I'm going to take those two screws out and instead, in the garage, in a big box of trips, I've got strips of Velcro. I'm going to try that. Um, there's always a possibility it could come off. Um, although, uh, generally speaking, we've got a lot of things in here that are Velcroed up and have stayed up really well. So I'm going to try that first. And if that doesn't work, then I'll end up coming back and, and uh, putting a couple of screws in. But I don't want to make any more holes in the van because these are just slightly different uh, width apart, you see. So I'm going to give that a whirl now. Here we go.
key thing here is get it on straight first time, otherwise you're going to have fun and games. Well, there you go, I think that looks about straight. Push it hard. That feels pretty good actually. Just push it and hold it for a minute. Get the full 12 and a half stone behind it. And then I'll do the same with the other leg. That's all right, isn't it? There we go. Now, there's a danger that it might wobble around in transit and fall off. We'll take that risk. But I'd rather do that than have more holes in. But I think three bits of Velcro on there should hold that quite well. So there you have it, caravan servicing is an absolute must folks, it costs £200 to have a service, it's worth every single penny. We know that we're good and we're safe on all things gas, we know that our brakes and all things mechanical on the caravan are sound. Uh, thanks to Darren we've picked up what might have been a potential damp problem going forward, might have saved us hundreds or thousands of pounds, who knows. So a caravan service is an absolute must. Uh, you've got a load of peace of mind and a whole load of reassurance when you get your caravan service. No matter how old or new your caravan is, once a year, get it done. Hope you found that useful. Don't forget we're back on Sunday, as I mentioned earlier on, at half past four with a product review like no other. Like I always say, if you haven't done yet, now's your chance. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment and hit the notification bell and you'll know when all the videos are being released from us here at Caravantastic. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. See you soon.